Congratulations! You've selected your new, beautiful Mohawk Revwood floor, and now it's time to install it. Revwood floors require a floating installation and utilize the Uniclick locking joint system. We've made this video just for you to cover important steps in site prep and floor installation. Remember, you must follow the installation instructions provided with your Revwood or Revwood Plus product in order for your warranty to be valid. All floating floors require underlayment. Also, if you're installing your new Revwood floor over concrete, you will need a vapor barrier. It is optional over a wood subfloor. For this video, we will be installing a Revwood floor with the pad attached. Before you install the floor, you'll need to inspect the site. Revwood floors require a clean, dry, flat, and structurally sound subfloor that is level and meets all local building codes. Floors should be installed in rooms that maintain a controlled climate. This means between 60 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit with a relative humidity from 35 to 65 percent. Revwood floors are for indoor use only and should not be installed in rooms with floor drains or sump pumps. Perform a moisture test to check for excessive moisture in the subfloor. Refer to Revwood installation instructions for appropriate conditions for your subfloor. Since Revwood floors float, planks should never be constrained by glue, nails, or screws. You can install over most substrates or existing flooring. If installing over a concrete substrate, you'll need to remove any existing wood flooring first. Most resilient or vinyl flooring and ceramic tiles do not need to be removed in order to install your Revwood floor. Be sure to use a vapor barrier if these existing flooring products are installed over a concrete subfloor and make sure all flatness requirements are met. Acclimate the floor by setting it in the room for up to 48 hours. Clear the floor of any old carpet, pad, or tack strips. The subfloor should be dirt and dust free, so give it a good sweep or vacuum in advance. Again, be sure the floor is clean, dry, flat, and structurally sound. If you need to undercut a door frame, use a spare plank to measure the height of the cut and cut one inch into the wall base. Clean out the debris and slide the plank one quarter inch under the door frame and make sure you have a hidden 3 8 inch expansion gap. Be sure to leave sufficient space in the doorways to leave room for your T-molding that will now join your new and existing floors. Transition moldings must be used in any doorway 32 inches or less. Run a level or straight edge across the floor to check for any peaks or depressions. Sand or plane any peaks and fill any depressions to ensure less than 3 16 of an inch unevenness per 10 foot span. With these steps completed, it's time to install the floor. A good installation tip is to inspect the planks of each box for any damage, then pull the planks from multiple boxes as you install in order to simulate a true hardwood floor install and to avoid pattern repeats. The Uniclick locking system is a tongue and groove application that allows for two installation options. Either angle the planks together until they lock and snap into place, or you can use a tapping block to slide and tap them into place. For ease of installation, Assemble the first few rows away from the wall with your back toward the wall. Once assembled, slide the assembly toward the starting wall and using spacers, leave a 3 8 inch expansion space around all sides. You'll then be able to kneel on top of the assembled rows as you continue to install the floor. For the first row, you'll need to remove the tongue on the long side as well as on the short side joint of the first plank only. Based on the size of your room, you may need to rip the first plank. Be sure to cut off the tongue side, then use a utility knife to remove just the short side tongue. We have our first row of planks ready to go with the tongue removed. Assemble the entire first row with the cut side toward the wall by inserting the short side tongue into the short side groove, then rotating downward. When you've reached the end of each row, you'll need to measure from the end of the last plank to the wall in order to get the length of the last plank in the row. Be sure to leave a 3 8 inch expansion space. Cut the plank and install it. When installing along uneven walls, use a compass to scribe the pattern onto your planks. Be sure to number them before you disassemble the row. Cut off the pattern, then reassemble them in number order. 
Be sure to remember the spacers when you put it back together. To insert the second row, insert the long side tongue of this plank into the long side groove of the first plank until the laminate edges meet, then rotate downwards until the joints lock. Next, insert the short side tongue of a full plank into the short side groove of the first plank in row 2 and rotate downwards. There will be a gap between the long sides of the planks. Raise the outside edge of the second row planks upward approximately 1 inch. Maintain this angle as you pull the plank in and until the edges meet. Then rotate down on the planks until the joints lock into place. Here's a tip. You can place a carton of planks across the planks of the row being installed to keep the installed planks in place during installation. When possible, start the next row with the piece trimmed from the end of the last row. The first piece must be at least 8 inches long. Once you've assembled 3 to 4 rows, slide the assembly toward the starting wall leaving a 3 8 inch expansion space around all sides. Spacers should also be placed at the beginning and end of each row. This will ensure that you've left enough space for the floor to expand. Continue the installation in the same manner until you've covered the subfloor, being sure to maintain at least 6 inches of stagger between the joints. When installing under a door frame, tap or slide along the long side joint to close it and tap along the end to slide the plank into place. For the last row, measure the distance from the second to last row to the wall. Cut each plank the correct width and install. Install the long side plank into the long side groove with the end joint aligned. Using a pull bar and a hammer, work evenly along the plank and lightly tap the joint closed. After tapping the long side closed, tap the short side closed using a tapping block or a pull bar. Inspect all joints and ensure the floor fits with 3 8 inch spacers and expansion gaps all along the perimeter. If you choose the tapping method of installation, you'll follow the same basic steps. Align the tongue and groove on the short sides, then place a tapping block on the end and tap lightly to close the joint. Follow the same method to join the long sides, lining up the tongue and groove and placing the tapping block no closer than 8 inches to the end of each plank. Then tap lightly along the plank to close the joint. Uneven tapping or excessive force may damage the joint. Finish the installation as demonstrated. Remove the spacers at the wall and proceed to add molding and trim to finish the floor, like a T-molding in your doorway or a quarter round at the walls. If you're installing your Revwood Plus floor and you want to enjoy the waterproof features such as the all pet protection and wet mopping, you'll need to follow a few more steps in order to meet the terms in your waterproof flooring system and all pet warranties. If you're installing your Revwood floor in a high moisture area such as a mudroom, kitchen, bathroom or laundry room, you'll want to seal the entire perimeter with mildew resistant 100% silicone sealant and also apply the sealant around any tubs, basins or exterior doors. In kitchens, you'll want to add sealant around the sink, dishwasher, refrigerator, ice maker or other water lines. In order to take advantage of the waterproof flooring system, you must apply a silicone bead around the perimeter of every room where Revwood Plus is installed. Be sure to install according to Revwood specific installation instructions as we've demonstrated so far. You'll need to verify that the joints on all sides of each plank are fully engaged and without any gaps. Insert the foam backer rod in the gap between the wall and the edge of the planks. Run a bead of 100% silicone along the top of the foam backer rod around the entire room so that the edge of the plank is covered. The silicone should connect the edge of the laminate surface to the wall or vertical surface. Be sure not to use excessive amounts of silicone and have a rag ready to clean up any mess. The foam backer rod allows the floor to expand and contract and allowing the silicone to seal out any moisture that may seep between the edge of the planks and the wall. Sealant must be 100% silicone. Do not use acrylic sealant. Once the sealant is installed over the backer rod, you can finish with trim and moldings. Prior to installing the moldings, apply silicone sealant to the portion of the molding or transition that will contact directly with Revwood Plus. Install the moldings and use a rag to remove any excess silicone. 
When installing transitions, set the foam backer rod in the expansion space next to the plastic track that will hold the molding. Apply silicone to the top of the backer rod, connecting the edge of the flooring with the track, and again add a bead of silicone to the area under the transition that will contact the floor. Then insert the transition into the track. Apply silicone sealant at connections next to the door frames or where any other objects meet the floor. To clean your Revwood floors, simply wipe dirt and dust away using a dust mop or a damp mop. You can make your own cleaner by using one cup of vinegar or one third cup of ammonia to one gallon of water. Spray the cleaner directly on the mop and not on the floor. You may wet mop Revwood Plus floors with water only if it's been installed according to the installation instructions. Be sure to wring out your mop before placing it back on the floor. Do not use steam cleaners and jet mops. They can damage your floor. You can also vacuum your floor using the hard surface attachment. Use felt furniture protectors and replace any plastic feet or casters with rubber. You can fix minimal floor damage with floor putty.